What's the word, y'all? Overtime in the last game of the day is definitely not good for my worst slash sleep schedule, but I'm here to talk about basketball because today might have been the best individual day of the NBA season. Hear me out. We had a 50-piece from Steph Curry. We saw some fights slash ejections from one of the best players in the league. The Bulls win. I mean, when the Bulls win, everybody win, right? Then we saw close to a 20-point comeback in Memphis. So just so much to talk about. Leave a like. Let's get into it. I think we can all agree that uh, Steph Curry is in the driver's seat for the MVP award right now. Now, I understand this is a revolving door when it comes to these awards because just last week, I'm on Basketball Reference, their MVP ladder had Rudy Gobert at number one. Uh, <laughs> and then Jimmy Butler and the Heat went on a run, and then he became the favorite for MVP. So it is always changing. But the Warriors are 9-1, and one, and he just put up a 50-piece. Kind of crazy. Now, the Atlanta Hawks, uh, for the most part, have been uh, super disappointed, I would say, to start off the season. But they had a plan. Nate McMillan had a plan going into this. And it was like, we're going to use our really good defenders, which are like Ka uh, Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, who've done really good jobs clamping up individual players. Even like Kevin Herter is a positive defensive player, at least in the 101. They were like, we're going to we're gonna go 101 and let our, our size, our length at these wing positions be the determining factor to stop Seth Curry. And for a little bit, it was working. You know what I'm saying? A little double-digit lead from them. And... and and then it snapped. Um, and it doesn't matter. Like, if you didn't watch this game, I highly recommend you go watch this, the footage of just Steph Curry. You ain't got to watch the whole game. Just go look at every possession from Steph Curry. A lot of the possessions from the Atlanta Hawks were like solid defense. But when Steph Curry is on, there is no better. There's got to be an app that's like the Steph Curry tracker. When he hits two shots in a row, you get a notification. Just in case you ain't already watching, you can tune in because that man is ridiculous. Legit must-see TV. And the Warriors as a whole are nine and one to start the season i definitely did not see that coming man definitely did not see that coming so let me give me give the roses to everybody um, of course steph curry like i said he's the mvp favorite in my, my, my mind right now Draymond my green still the great vocal leader great defender all of the players that are on this team going into the season i saw his question marks i knew that jordan Poole had lit it up in the preseason but i wasn't sure how much of that would translate to the actual game and though he's been up and down he's had more ups than downs uh wiggins <laughs> wiggins be on the court and then you realize that he got 15 points you don't even really, really be thinking about it um they just got so many good role players that fit what they do this team's chemistry is like no other and i want to give a lot of credit to to steve kerr because steve kerr definitely be getting dra uh, uh, dragged through the mud the last couple of years oh how good of a coach can he actually be he's got the greatest shooter of all time two of the greatest shooters of all time and then he's got one of the best players of all time and kevin Durant coming into his team how hard is it to really coach a team like that and a lot of that might have been warranted honestly but this year he showcased like man the system that i have implemented for these players is the best in the league so giving him credit and i'm giving bob myers credit and here's why he decided to not always just go with the best individual player. He went with the players that he knew understood the system and were selfless enough to fit with the words. What do you mean by this, Kenny? Eric Pascu's a good NBA player. They traded him away for nothing because in the, in the year he was there, or the, what was it, two years he was there, he never really got a full grasp of whatever the heck the, the Warriors are running over there. So they gave him away for practically nothing because he deserves to play somewhere. It just didn't really work there. Avery Bradley was pretty decent for them in the preseason and everything. The, uh, Steph Curry even wanted him to come back. But Bob Myers like, you know what? And even though Avery Bradley sees himself as the best perimeter defender in the league and he's still a solid NBA player, he don't fit with what we're doing here. Maybe he don't understand the system to the, to the same way that Gary Payton II does. So even though Avery Bradley might be the better player, we'd rather take GP2. Like, like it is amazing team building to find a team with the chemistry slash synergy that this team plays with. Because even though I'm saying Steph Curry is the favorite for MVP, it ain't like this man been dropping 30s all season long. He had his fair share of duds for Steph Curry standards, but the rest of the team is there to pick them up. Like today, though Steph Curry ended up with 50, Juan Toscano Anderson hit some huge shots in this one. He hit some huge shots in this one. You know, and Juan T... He's a good NBA player, but he ain't blowing you out of the water, but he fits with what the Warriors want to do. He understands the system more than a lot of people. I've said this before, but everybody that is getting rotational, or majority of the people that are getting rotational minutes for this team have been here for at least a year or two years to really learn this system and understand how to cut, when to cut, when the handoff, when to just give the ball to Steph and let him do his thing. And though this team does turn the ball over quite a bit, and a lot of that is due to the free flowiness of it, they understand everything. 
And to think that there's a there's a dude on his boat to practice every day that's getting the workouts in on the bike when the team is playing and he's going to be coming back soon? It's crazy. This team is scary. This team is real scary. But super fun to watch. Shout out to Steph Curry in his 50 piece. All right, let's talk about the other big thing. Uh, Nikola Jokic versus Markeith Morris. If you don't know, uh, late in this game, Denver Nuggets pull away with it. First of all, very big, big win for them. It's very unfortunate that this happened at the end of the game because... If it wasn't for that, we'd be talking about how good of a performance individually Nikola Jokic had. But we're we going to talk about the actual game. But let's get to the to the last part. So the Denver Nuggets are about to win this game. It's like two, three minutes left in it. They're up by double digits. Bam misses a shot that Jokic contests. He get a rebound. He bring it up court. And Markeith Morris is trying to do one of those take fouls that we see pretty often in the NBA. But instead of wrapping him up or, or, or reaching in to get the referee to call a foul, he threw one of these. Boom. Right into the ribs, the knees hit each other, and Nicole Jokic didn't like that. So when Markeith Morris turned around and walked away, boom, big shove. Markeith Morris is on the floor for 10 minutes. They bring out the stretcher, but he ends up walking off the court on his own accord. You can decide yourself if he, if he deserves an Oscar. That's not what this is about. My point in all of this is, to Nikola Jokic, he cannot lose his cool in this situation. I understand the Morris brothers have the reputation and they, they have the reputation because they actually do the dirty slash cheap things when the refs aren't looking. This is a very physical game between two of the best centers in the league between Bam Adebayo and Nikola Jokic. Nikola Jokic is a player that gets beat up a ton because he is a bruiser type player. And I understand it, it piled up for three and a half quarters and oh, he just couldn't take it no more. But he has to be able to hold his cool. This is not the first time we saw Nikola Jokic lose his cool. And the reason why he needs to, 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 to keep his cool here is because, yeah, maybe Markeith was selling there quite a bit. But, there, but there's a world where things are a lot worse than that. He pushed the man that wasn't looking and maybe... Okay. He is a star player on one of the better teams in the league that's already missing their second best player. Uh, maybe the, th the third best player, <laughs> you can argue if Michael Porter Jr. is even that at this point, um, is out for a couple weeks because he hurt his back on that missed layup that we laughed at a couple days ago. My fault. I didn't know he was actually injured. Um, you cannot afford to put yourself in a situation where you are suspended from multiple games. And I don't know, maybe by the time this, this video is out, we know if it's a one game, two game, four game, or even if he, he might not get suspended at all. But you have to be able to keep your cool. I mean, I've had times where, where I've lost my cool. Like, we all have had these. We, we're human, right? Um, we are emotional beings. But in a situation like this, your team needs you in a, in a crowded Western Conference to be on the court. Because if you don't have Jamal, you don't have Michael Porter Jr., and you don't have Jokic, how many games are you winning? Now, yeah, even as, if the suspicion is just two games, it is still significant enough, Right? Um, and, and I pray, and I pray that the Markeith thing was just me selling, him selling it a little bit, but it's just bad optics overall for the NBA, because even if you are an NBA fan, seeing something like this is just not good, that you got Jimmy Butler talking about, let's meet up, meet me in the back, when in reality, I love Jimmy Butler, man, I got a post of this man right next to me, you don't want no smoke with Jokic, bro, I'm, I'm just being honest with you, you don't want no smoke with Jokic in a real tussle, so it's just, it's just, it's just bad, you know what I'm saying, Markeith Morris is in the bad, and Jokic is in the bad. You know, but when it comes to on court in the actual game, if we didn't have this push slash ejection slash suspension type thing, we would have been able to come here and talk about how Jokic had a trip, his first triple double of the year against Bam Adebayo. Kenny, what's the significance of that? I watched this season, Bam Adebayo clamp up the best bigs in the entire league. Um, um let, wait, let me go through their their schedule because I want to I want to showcase some of these numbers. I think we've all seen on Twitter. Those things are like, hey, when players guarded by Bam Adebayo, he is doing this and that. Those things are actually real, y'all, for, for show. So, so far this season, Bam has put up really good individual statistics against Rudy Gobert, held him to eight points. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr. ended up with eight points. Giannis had 15 points. He individually has been clamping up some of the better bigs in the league. And today, he couldn't do a thing against Jokic. Jokic was eating that man alive. And that is a testament to how good of a player Nikola Jokic was and is. This team, on paper, should not be as good as ha have they been playing, right? Um, offense has still not really come around completely for this team, but they held the heat to less than 100 points. Um, 
Kyle Lowry of, of a struggle of a game. Pretty much everybody other than Jimmy Butler really, really struggled out there. But man, Nikola Jokic, bro, if it wasn't for the push and everything, we would be focusing on the fact that you had a triple double against the best defensive center in the league, maybe this season. But instead, everybody wants to talk about the push and everything. I mean, which makes sense. Hey, the Bulls won a game against the Brooklyn Nets, ladies and gentlemen. Seven to three Bulls. That's a, that's a good win for us. Now the Brooklyn Nets um, were on the I think five game win streak coming into this. And then they were on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. So they shouldn't be overreacting, of course, the fact that they lost this game. James Harden didn't look good. Nobody looked good other than LaMarcus Aldridge and, and um, Kevin Durant. But I just want to shed some light on my fourth quarter Bulls, bro. We've come a long way, man. There, there were years in, in a row where I dreaded being in the fourth quarter in a close game. Because I, I just assumed that, that if it was a, a less than a 10-point game and we were up, we were going to blow that game. You know, if it was a tie game going to the fourth, we're going to blow that game. But this year, the fourth quarter Bulls are disgusting. I don't know. Nikola Vucevic, his, his struggles are well documented. In the fourth quarter today, he looked like the best version of himself again. Um, DeMar DeRose continues to impress me. I mean, you can't look at that man and Zach Levine and say that the Bulls don't have two All-Stars this season so far. Boom. Ayo DeSumo, second round pick. He was drafted during a Jimmy, oh no, no, during a Papa John's commercial. They didn't even call his name on TV. Papa John's commercial was on. It was just across the bottom. That's fuel to be great. And he has been, man. Um, um, even Billy Donovan said, like, listen, we didn't expect Ayo to be getting rotational minutes early into the season. But he, his presence, his energy is infectious. So that's why this man gets minutes. Um, he had that one heat check late in the fourth quarter that I wanted to see go in so bad. But now nah, he missed it. Um, offensively, defensively, the Bulls look really solid today. Super excited about that one, man, because the last two losses against Philly had me in the gutter. So I'm back on cloud now, y'all. Now, but realistically, I don't take two wins too, no wins too hard. I don't take no losses too tough. And that's how you don't go insane when watching basketball, I'm telling you. All right, we got two more games to talk about, at least from games that I've watched. Uh, the Timberwolves blew, what was it, an 18-point lead with seven minutes to go or something like that? Oh, man, listen, I think majority of NBA fans are rooting for the Minnesota Timberwolves to be successful. Carl Anthony Towns is one of the most likable players in the league, and I think he even got more people on his side this year more than any other. Um, Anthony Edwards is one of the most entertaining players on and off the court. They got, they got, you know what I'm saying? They ain't been good recently, so it ain't like they got no rivals in the NBA. It's legitimately everybody wants to see them be great, and they disappoint us every single time. This team has D'Angelo Russell, Carl Anthony Towns, and Anthony Edwards. All three of them had 25 or more, and they do stuff like this kind of consistently. Maybe not D'Angelo Russell getting 30, but they, they have three really solid scores. There's no reason for their offense to be as bad as it is. Is that Chris Finch? At some point, we have to stop looking at the coaches and be like, ah, it's his fault. Because this is how you get seven coaches in, I don't know how many years. They just get coaches like boom, 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 boom. Um, Since, since Saunders. It's just not a good look, bro. It's not a good look. There's a play in the fourth quarter. There's a sideline out of bounds play. And nobody came to the ball and they got a five-second violation. How many times have you actually seen a five-second violation called in the NBA game? Not many. It happened in this one because nobody wanted to come to the ball. And the worst thing that I see in the NBA, and it, the, oh my God, it was on full display in this game, is when things start to get, to, this team was up again, seven, 16, 17, 18 points were like seven minutes ago. When things started to get real tough, how did the offense go, y'all? Do you think it was free-flowing and as good as it was to get them up by that much? Or did they result to isolation ball and chucking up contested threes? Which one do you think it was? Yeah, it was the latter of the two, y'all. And it's frustrating. Carl Anthony Towns is one of the most gifted bigs I have ever seen with my with my own two eyes offensively. Um, even though he be turning the ball over way too much for a guy of his position, whatever. I don't know if that dude got a touch in the fourth quarter. Other than him chucking up like a half-court shot and it going in. I, it was all D'Angelo Russell. And listen, I messed with D'Lo for sure. And he was having a good game to this point. So maybe you riding the high hand. But after three contested jump shots, my boy, we got to give it to somebody else. Can we give it to Cat? Can we give it to Cat? Shout out to Jaren. Shout out to, to Brandon Clark because his minutes have been up and down for the last two seasons. He had a 20-piece today out of nowhere. He almost had more points than he had minutes. It's so frustrating to watch because I want to see them be successful. 
This team is a good defensive team right now, but the offense ain't caught up. What the heck? So I just got my uh, my bedtime reminder on my phone, so I should wrap this up with the last game of the day, which is the Charlotte Hornets losing another game. Another loss to the Charlotte Hornets to the Lakers in the Staples Center. I think this makes, what, four or five straight losses for the Charlotte Hornets. And they started off so hot, and, and now five straight losses. And uh, before this one, this was only a three-point loss, so better, I guess? They had lost their last four games by a margin of 22 points. They had been getting the the, the, the dog beat out of them. You know what I'm saying? And um, today they could have won this game, man. <laughs> a lot of it boiled down to like that one possession where LaMelo Ball got five free throws because they couldn't, the Lakers wouldn't shut up and they kept getting a technical foul. Technical foul, Russell Westbrook. Technical foul, Frank Vogel. And I think it might have been Carmelo Anthony. They were just getting technical foul after technical foul. And that led the door open for the Charlotte Hornets to make some noise. Um, Terry Rozier hit some big shots down the stretch. Lamelo is really good in this game, but they can't put together a win. And they their defense has been just really, really bad recently. Um, and a lot of that, I mean, you, you're playing Mason Plumley and Nick Richards at your center positions. You're just not going to be able to, <laughs> you're not going to be able to hang against good teams or any team for that matter. So they got to figure that out. They have a breakout player in Miles Bridges who's slowly cooling down, you know what I'm saying? Today, 33%, uh, 27% from three. And they, they got Terry Rozier back, and you would expect them to find their way. They haven't been able to do that. But the Lakers get a win. Uh, congratulations to them. Uh, it wasn't pretty. It def definitely was not pretty. They almost did it again. 26-point lead against OKC, 19-point lead against OKC, and I think in this one they led by like 16, and they almost blew it again. It went all the way to overtime, but thanks to their best player, Carmelo Anthony, <laughs> they were able to pull this one out, bro. Melo is legitimately shooting 50% from three on the season. He had 29, like, and it's not even like, oh, he's taking two a game. On like crazy volume, Carmelo Anthony is doing three to the dome more than I've ever seen in his life. So what a what a pickup for them because without him, hey, this is rough in this one, bro. This is real, real rough in this one. I can't even talk negatively because they ended up with the win, but the offense down the stretch is just the same thing I just talked about with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Oh, we gonna dribble, dribble, dribble. Maybe do a little pick and roll with Car with um with Russell Westbrook and Anthony Davis, but Anthony Davis loved to pop. It's not really a roll. Or it's like, hmm, isolation Russell Westbrook, isolation Anthony Davis. And and those players are talented enough to hit some shots every once in a while, but it ain't it ain't Nothing that I would rely on long term. They were able to sneak out of this one by the skin of their teeth. And that was Melo, legitimately. It was Carmelo. I guess Anthony Davis had what scored like seven straight points in overtime. So he yeah, he deserved love too. But it was that's that was it. I mean a win is a win, but man, it was ugly. Alright, that's all man. I, I it's, wow, what a what a day for the NBA world. Leave a like. I know we missed a lot of games, but you know.